Spotify is amazing. It has given me access to untold amounts of music that I would never have heard otherwise. It's a great place for us to put our music out in that it's very easy for people to hear what we do. But there are some aspects of it that are a bit of a pain. All the music marketing gurus on YouTube, such as Damien Keyes and the people at Burstimo and many others, all say that you need to get your tracks onto Spotify's curated playlists. The least thing you can do when you release a track is present it. If you get on one of these playlists, it can massively increase the reach of your music, um, how many people hear it, and if, if you're selling it, um, how much money you make. There's a thing called Spotify for Artists. So if you're a, an artist releasing music, you claim this account and it's the way you interact with Spotify. We upload our tracks through our distributor. They send it to everywhere, including Spotify. And then one of the options is to present it for their curated playlists. We've presented loads of tracks. And it has been, so far anyway, 100% a total waste of our time. The system does seem to be set up for mainstream genres. So if you make R&B or some version of heavy metal or hip hop or singer songwriter -y malarkey, then you've got a chance of getting onto a playlist. When I say a chance, they have 40,000 new tracks a day delivered to Spotify, so there is a chance, but it's an incredibly small one. One of our recent tracks, Ancestorships, has got a really good response on YouTube and Facebook. So I'm just going to show you how difficult it is to present a track that doesn't fit any mainstream genre. Now, Ancestorships has got instruments such as medieval and Persian percussion, various stringed instruments from medieval Europe and folk traditions. It's got flutes, and then there's a little bit of Croydon dubstep bass end. It's not folk music. It's not dubstep. It's not up-tempo enough to be any kind of dance music. It literally does not fit any mainstream genre. Now, if Spotify was set up to allow you to give an accurate kind of description of it, there might have been a way to place it somewhere. So I'm just going to go through what it looks like when you attempt to upload a track for consideration for being added to playlists. So the first thing is you have to pick a genre. I'm just showing you a screen grab here of the list of genres and we don't fit any of those. We're not ambient, we're not Asian and Middle Eastern regional genres, although we have influences from there. We're not most of those things, we're not really dance or electronic. We're not really a European regional genre and you skim down that list and we literally don't fit anywhere. In f yeah, where would we start? Um, so maybe we might pick folk as a kicking off point with the idea being that later on maybe we might put in that there's a slight electronic influence. So there you go, you can pick three subgenres, and some of them are just completely freaking weird. Muscandy. Their lists are incomplete, but then they have things in them that are just so unbelievably niche that you just wonder who the hell put this list together. I am aware that Spotify is looking to deal with less with genres and more with moods. So you do get the option here of picking musical cultures. Well, we're none of those. We're British we, we, and we dip into other things. We can choose moods and that's okay. We could decide that the track was, I don't know, from this list, meditative a bit. I don't know, chill, makes no sense. We can pick two styles. Okay, none of those make sense. 
instruments on the song. Once again, a fairly random collection of instruments to choose from. And then you get, is it a cover, is it a remix, is it instrumental, how is it recorded, and so on. But now I'm going to backtrack slightly, and let's have a look at, if we didn't pick folk, probably the next thing is we're dance electronic. So maybe we could go electronic and then somewhere add in the fact that there's rootsy folk instruments in there. So, once again, choose three subgenres. And I look all the way through this, and once again, it's a fairly random selection of, of dance genres. Philly Club, um, Sham Step, UK Funky. What you're not going to find in there is something like Dub, which is a major dance genre that has been around forever. And once again, you get the choice of musical cultures, moods, song styles, and instruments. Okay, so considering that this is the dance electronic one, instruments. And once again, you've got this really bizarre selection of instruments to choose from. There's an erhu, a Chinese bowed instrument. There's an ouz, Arabic stringed instrument. A sanjian, an umbira. And I kind of think you've either got to have a comprehensive list of instruments or keep it really basic. And they've just got this very odd mix of some mainstream things that you might expect and some randomly picked obscure instruments. None of which fit what we do, or very rarely. So I have literally got no way of describing our track. I can either go folk or dance electronic, and in both cases there is nothing there that lines up with what we do. Okay, so you decide that it's got particular instruments and it's a particular mood. You tick the boxes to say... In our case, it's instrumental and it's recorded in the studio. So if it's instrumental, I don't have to pick a language. I can just go straight to the next section. The next section will give you the option of saying where you are. And then you have an area 500 characters long where you can describe your track. And the purpose of this area is to convince Spotify why you should be in a curated playlist. And it asks for the story behind the song, what inspired it, your plans for promoting it, etc. Which is hard, but you can have a go. But ultimately, because it is totally impossible for us to describe what we do in their incredibly bizarre, random selection of options, I have a go with these tracks and I present them each time. And the main outcome of that is that it delays people hearing our music by about three weeks because you've got to give some lead time. I put our tracks out on Bandcamp and you know about it within two minutes and you can be downloading it or streaming it within two minutes. I then upload it to our distributor who send it to places including Spotify but you've got to give them at least a couple of weeks for them to go through this process of perhaps looking at your track and deciding to add it to a curated playlist. At this point I've been doing it for probably best part of two years. We've produced a lot of music in that time and pretty much every track has been presented. It has got nowhere because of their completely bizarre fixation with mainstream genres, but giving you no way to describe what you do or tell them how it might fit into a playlist. There's plenty of obscure music on Spotify. I said at the beginning of this video, I have discovered all kinds of amazing stuff I would never have heard otherwise if it wasn't for Spotify. That side of Spotify is great. But in terms of their curated playlists, which have tens of thousands or in some cases millions of listeners, you have no chance whatsoever of getting anywhere near one of them unless you make something pathetically mainstream. It's frustrating. I just wish they had a better way of allowing artists to describe your track so they actually have an idea of where it might fit. Nothing I can do about it though. I'm not despondent. Our music still goes on Spotify and some people do listen to it. Our numbers are pathetically small. We would like more people to hear it. We will continue to ask our distributor to send our music to Spotify. I'm 50-50 on whether I'm going to waste my time presenting tracks for curated playlists. I haven't decided yet. Um, if we ever do get on one, I'll be the first to tell you. <laughs>